Hello, everybody. I hope you're having a fantastic day. I'm having a great day because I'm hanging out with you. And I'm also hanging out with my favorite ESP32 board, the ESP32 PoE ISO. Now, this has all the goodness of the standard ESP32, plus it has Ethernet. And in addition to having Ethernet, it has power over Ethernet, which means if you have a PoE hub, you can simply take your Ethernet cable, plug it in, and the board will power right up. Beyond that, it has some battery management. It has full power isolation between the Ethernet and the rest of the board and a few other goodies as well. Now, for as much as I love this board, there are four things that I absolutely hate about this board, and we're going to address all four of them right now. Now, for as much as I love this board, there are a few things that I hate about it, and I'm going to lump the first two together, and that will make sense in just a minute. The first thing that I absolutely hate about this board is that there is no way to mount it. There are zero mounting holes on the thing and uh, no particular way that you can mount this once you're finished with your project. Now, they do have some uh, 3D printable enclosures and stuff like that, but that limits your prototyping options. You can't uh, put your wires on there. You may not be able to put the headers on the side you want. And that's kind of just a general pain in the butt. The second thing I hate about it is that there's not really a great way to do any prototyping on this board. There's no cool shields or anything like that. They do have these UAXT things, and they're cool, but they're not exactly proprietary, but not exactly common either. Now, I decided to solve both of those problems with the help of this video's sponsor, PCBWay.com, who's actually celebrating their eighth anniversary right now. So I have been making PCBs for this board like they're going out of style because I use this board in every commercial project I do. I use this thing nonstop. So I know the ins and outs of it. And so I've made a revision two and a revision three, and I've decided to share a revision three with the world and allow you guys to get it through the link in the description that I have. So I have a shared project up on pcbway.com. You can click on it and you can order these boards. And I'm going to show you why you might want to do that. Um, Again, I love this board, but it's got some shortcomings. And number one, you can't mount it. So I decided to solve that with this. Uh, this prototyping board I made has four good mounting holes, and those mounting holes are completely clear of anything I'm doing on the board, which means that I can either get in here with a screwdriver and pull the screws and pull the entire assembly out, or I can pull this out and leave the assembly still mounted. So I have options. Now I genuinely want to help the people who are watching this video. So if you have no interest in making PCBs, I do have another option to solve that first issue. I had YouTuber Simple Electronics uh, make a couple of little standoffs for this thing, which actually will mount here on the side. So you can 3D print these and um, you can use them to mount the board like this and you know, you're completely clear, you're clear of your pins and all that kind of stuff, which is pretty dang sweet. So I will have the link for the 3D printing files as well as the links for the boards in the description. Now, this PCB is so much more than just a way to mount your Olimex board. It has three rows of pins in the middle, and those are duplications of the pins on the board itself. So one set can be used to mount the board, and then every single pin is broken out twice awesome for prototyping. And then in addition to that, we have ground 3.3 volts and 5 volts for every single pin. So there's extra ones out there that you can use. Um, you've got extra places to hook power and ground to all of your devices. Now beyond that, we have an I squared C breakout over here, which I often use for those 16 by 2 LCDs. And I'm going to show you that in a minute. And then over here on the side, we have a custom connector that I use for a lot of my projects. But it has places to put standard resistors, so it can be a great place to put some LEDs on a ribbon cable that you can remove separately. So I have so much I want to tell you about this board and so much to cover that I'm not going to make you watch me solder. But the way I generally do this, uh, there's a couple different ways, but in general, I solder female headers on this and I solder male headers on this. Now, if I need to do a lot of prototyping, you can use those extra long female headers on this side, which would give you a female header on the top and you'd still be able to plug it in. Um, now, when you look at the board, you'll see that it has UEXT up here and Ethernet here. This is UEXT and this is Ethernet. So that tells you which way the board goes because it can be reversed. That's just the way the board is designed. Uh, so you pop it in and you've got your nice little mounting going on there. Now beyond that, you can set this thing up to prototype however you want and I'll show you how I do it. 
If I'm in full-on prototyping mode, this is what I do. I set up a set of female headers to put the thing in. I usually just use one row of extra uh, pins over here in case I need to tap into a pin. And then I set up ground 3.3 volts and five volts on both sides. So I've got a nice, pretty, um, looks like a flag of all the pins that I generally need for prototyping as well as my I squared C. My favorite way to use this connector is with the 1602 LCD screens. And uh, I use these pre-made DuPont connectors. I just get them off Amazon. And it's a little weird to have the red as the ground, but that's just the way it goes. I've been doing this long enough. I know how it goes. So um, you do that, you put the connector in. And then I wanna say beyond just giving you the 3D printing files for this and the ability to make your own versions of this, I'm gonna give you some code. And the code I'm gonna give you is a basic setup of how to use the ethernet on this thing, basic setup of how to use the screen and a basic setup of how to use Arduino over the air update with ethernet. So all that is on here and you'll see when you plug the board in with my code, you will get a little um, boot up pretty much immediately and it's gonna tell you that this is the ESP32 number one. I always number my boards and this is software revision 1.0.2. So as you can see, this board allows us to go way beyond what the UEXT connector can do. You can mount the board using the PCB. You can leave the PCB in your enclosure and take the ESP32 out. You can take the whole thing out. You can hook up a screen, you can prototype, you can put some LEDs, whatever you want, thanks to this PCB, which was sponsored by PCBWay.com. Link is in the description. I want to thank them because they give me the time to be able to build cool stuff like this and to share it with you. But there are more problems about this board that we want to solve. So let's do it. All right, so at this point, we've solved two of the four problems. We've solved the mounting, we've solved the prototyping, but problem number three can be kind of frustrating. And I've seen all kinds of posts about this where people say that the ethernet seems to not always connect when you turn on the board. And um, I've seen all different kinds of suggestions. I've seen people put capacitors on here and all kinds of different things. Uh, what I found is really funny, but in my example code, you'll see this, that at the very top of the little setup block, I put a quarter of a second delay. And that's all it takes. A 250 millisecond delay allows whatever needs to settle down to settle down. And then I go through the rest of the setup process and the ethernet will connect every single time. Without that delay, you could be in for a world of hurt trying to figure out why the thing isn't connecting and stuff like that. And it will seem like it works and you'll change cables and do all kinds of stuff. But with that quarter second delay, no matter where I put this board, PoE, not PoE, whatever, it just works. And last but definitely not least, the number four thing that I hate about this board might actually be the number one thing that I hate about this board, and it is the documentation. Now you read the documentation and it looks like it is freaking fantastic. It looks amazing. There's schematics and code examples and all that kind of stuff, and it looks really awesome. The problem is, it's not always accurate. And you will see forum posts where people from Olimex will come in and say, oh yeah, you can't do that. And the documentation will clearly say you can do that and uh, it just doesn't get updated. And that kind of stinks. And that is actually the reason why I have a revision two and a revision three of this board. And the reason for that is because when you go on the documentation, you will see that some of the pins are listed as free to use. And so you would kind of work on the assumption that when you're building something like, hey, I might need to do something in the future, this pin says free to use. So I'm gonna go ahead and just assign it to this pin and let it roll. Well, it turns out the free to use isn't always free to use. And one of the things I've learned about working with this board they are doing so much with the relatively limited number of IO pins that you have on ESP32, which means that a lot of things do double duty. And so in other words, your code might work perfectly well when you are powering this um, using the USB and running on ethernet or running on Wi-Fi, but it may not work on PoE. And that was exactly what happened here. I was using a pin that said that it was free to use, um, but that pin was free to use except when you were powering the board with PoE. So really the only advice I have for you on there is to test, 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 and test in the environment that you're gonna use this thing. In other words, if you are planning on ever using this thing with power over ethernet, then run every bit of your test code on power over ethernet. If you are gonna only run it on Wi-Fi, then run every bit of your code on Wi-Fi. Don't, don't do your prototyping on ethernet and then run your final code on Wi-Fi. If you're gonna use the power over ethernet, run every single bit of your testing 
with power over ethernet on because occasionally one of the pins you think you can use, you might not be able to be used. But if you keep that in mind, you will absolutely love this board. So I cannot thank enough PCBWay for sponsoring this video and giving me the time and the boards and stuff like that so I can do this. I really want to thank YouTuber Simple Electronics. His link will be in the description. Uh, he helped lay out these boards and we worked through them together and he designed this 3D printing stuff and all that. Just an awesome guy, awesome YouTuber. Highly recommend that you check him out. And uh, I want to thank you for watching and have a great day.